Hey everybody, it's Never, and the day has come. This is the public release of my UI. Now, a little clarification on what that means. This is an add-on pack with the configuration files necessary to set those add-ons up the way that I use them so you can have the same UI I do. I didn't build this from the ground up just because that's not something that I really know how to do, but I do know how to configure add-ons, and so here you go. The TLDR here is download the zip file from the link in the description, extract the files, put them where they belong, and change the profile in-game to never UI for all the relevant add-ons. But I'm gonna go for, through this in more detail for those of you who don't really know how to do UI stuff yet or need a little more information than that. The first thing you wanna do before you do anything else is make a backup of your existing UI. So this is my PTR account folder, but it's exactly the same on live. Make a folder called Backup. And then you want to take your WTF and your interface folders, and you want to copy both of them into the backup folder. You can do that by holding control to multi-select, and then if you drag with the right mouse button in Windows, it will prompt you for what you want to do, and you can just choose copy. So now that that's done, the first thing we need to do is download the actual UI zip. And so we'll copy it from the description, or just click it and put it there. And it will come up and want to and want to download this thing. So just hit save. You want to put it in your WoW folder for convenience, but you can put it anywhere you want. I don't care. So now that we have that, we will open this up. I like to use WinRAR because it's you know quote unquote free, even though it's not really. But you know most of us are poor. So let's extract all these files to just where they want to go. They'll show up in the World of Warcraft folder right here. And so here's the stuff that we've got to work with. Now, there's a few things that you can do that are optional. The first one is the fonts. If you want the font that I use uh, to replace all of your system fonts, you just have to copy this thing right to the WoW directory. And it'll just show up right in line right there. This is an override folder. If you decide you don't like the fonts or you don't want to use them, you don't have to copy it and you can delete it if you don't like them. This part stands by itself. The next thing is we have an add-ons folder that lives inside the interface folder. If you don't already have one, that's fine. You can just copy it over and make one. If you already have one, just copy this here and confirm to replace and boom, you're good to go. That just adds a couple of things that aren't available to download from Curse. So once that's there, we can deal with saved variables. Now this belongs under WTF account and then you choose the account that you wanna put this in for. So. If you're gonna use this across multiple accounts, you will need to do this part for each account you wanna use, but most of us only play one. So once this is here, you'll see inside the account names folder, you'll have a save variables folder already, and then the names of all the realms that you have characters on. So just take this save variables, move it over here, or we'll copy it over there, and then you can just say, yes, I want to merge it with what's already there. If it wants to override stuff, that means you already have a configuration file for any of the add-ons in there, and by saying yes, you will remove the configuration you already have. All of the add-ons in there, it's kind of a everything or nothing thing. You either use my configuration or you don't, but since you made a backup, you can safely overwrite them, and if you don't like it, you can just restore the ones from your backup. So once save variables is in there, the only thing we have left to do is to actually get the add-ons from Curse. I'm using the Curse app. You can also do this with the Curse client. They work pretty much the same way. Um, I don't have any add-ons installed right here. This little guy will automatically download all the add-ons that are needed for this. And so we'll just double click that to get it going. Just make sure that you actually have the, the installation that you want to install them to as your active open one, and it'll just plug right through those. Now, there is a readme file in here, and you can open that up, and it will give you a list of all the add-ons that are included in that add-on pack. So if you, for some reason, need or want to download them manually, these are the ones that you need to download. This one right here sometimes is just called Shared Media, but uh, the actual official name for it is LibSharedMedia 3.0. And the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory. You should be able to search on Curse or WoW Interface and find all of these by this name. So once you have all of those in place, we're actually ready to load the game up and get going with stuff. One thing I'll point out right now while the game is loading is that uh, this is on the PTR, so some stuff is a little wonky here, but it'll work the same way on live. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that this is meant for a 1920 by 1080 16 by 9 display. And so if your display size is any different, you may need to do some adjustment just to make sure that everything works correctly. And let's make a 
test character. Um, trolls start off pretty fast, so let's make a troll mage. It doesn't really matter what we call him. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make sure all the add-ons that we need are enabled, and pretty much all of them will be enabled by default. Um, I'll scroll through this list slowly so you can refer to it if you want to see what exactly is enabled by pausing it, but that's that. They should already be enabled, so we're going to hop in here and start setting things up. Also, keep in mind that I do use the alpha releases of all the add-ons that I use to keep on top of things, and so sometimes add-ons um, are doing some experimental stuff that isn't quite finalized for a public release so that's why you may occasionally see a lua error here and there it's just because i'm running the very cutting edgest version of all this stuff so that i can be on top of things for changes that might be coming so if you have trouble with scaling the place you want to look for is uh, under system and advanced there's a ui scale feature that you can use you just check this box and you can scoot this up and down and it will make the elements of the ui uh, grow or shrink to accommodate different screen resolutions if you need to use it on a different screen size a physical size um, like a, a wider aspect ratio or like a four by three or something then you might need to individually move the components of the UI and that's something that's a little outside of the scope of this guide so that's how that works so what we need to do is we need to apply the configuration file to each of the add-ons and this is unfortunately something you'll need to do for each character you want to use the UI on but you'll only need to do it once so it's if there was a way to automate this I would but there isn't so the first thing we're gonna do is go to pitbull and that is forward slash pb4 papa bravo 4 and then we're going to go to profiles and we're going to choose never ui real simple next we're going to do bartender same thing it's bt4 bravo tango 4 in this case profiles and never ui and you can see stuff is already starting to change the next is raven r-a-v-e-n just like the bird and profiles and Yep, you guessed it, never UI. And then for Chinchilla Minimap, you just right click on the Minimap. If it's uh, this goofy shape, you know that you've got it installed, right? Profiles, never UI. So it's starting to kind of come together, but there's a little more to do. So we want to hit uh, Escape, go to Interface, and then go to Add-ons. For Mask, just load up the options and use this drop down menu. Make sure it's still on Global, and just choose Mask Shadow 5, and that will override everything to use the right mask skins next is quartz we already did pitbull and then we'll go to profiles under quartz and then choose never ui and then skinner that'll be the last one we do go to profiles drop this down choose never ui and then confirm it will reload the ui with the changes for skinner and so you can see those right here with this background and the border and all that stuff. You may have noticed that the tooltips start off being the, the way that I put them. That's just because the add-on that does that requires no configuration file, so it's universal to all your characters. So that's how that one is. I personally kind of wish they were all like that because I want the same uh, setup for each character, but some people, that would be the worst thing ever. So that's the uh, add-ons that are in there. Weak auras will automatically get everything that it needs. There's only a few elements here for weak auras, but uh, namely it's the combo points. And so if you, if you don't play something that uses combo points, if you play something that uses holy power or something else like that, then you might want to come in here and change the trigger from combo points to whatever the type of power you need is for each of these it's a little more work but honestly I only play a druid and so uh, that isn't really something that I ever run into so that's the basic way to set this up um, one cool thing about reloading UI just slash reload is it will actually write the configuration files to the games uh, to the games directory so that if you do that it's effectively like saving your work so while you're messing with your UI it's a good idea to do that once in a while in case you crash then you don't lose all the work that you've done. So that's how you set up the UI. And so if all you wanted to do was know that, then the only thing left to do is just tell you where stuff is and how it works. 
So the first thing is, where's your, where's your unit frames? Where's your health bar and your target and all that? Well, I like to keep them hidden and minimal. So to find them, you just look at the edge of the mini map right here and then go in a little ways, just directly above the mini map, scoot up about an inch and boom, there it is. So if you don't want it to automatically hide, there's an adjustment you can make to Pitbull. And so you'll see that you've got your target and your target of target over here. So we're just gonna load up the Pitbull options under layout editor, we're going to choose player, and then we're going to go to faders, and then we're going to uncheck combat fader, and that will make it so that it's always there, if you like it that way. Another thing that you can do is you can go into Pitbull and go to config mode. I'm going to turn this back on. And then you can choose to see what's it look like when I've got a party. So this shows everything that can possibly be displayed. So you've got your player frame, here's your pet bar, target, target of target, focus, focus target. Party members will grow from the bottom left up to the top right. So if you have a full 40 man raid, for example, they fill out this way. And that's how that works. So it's pretty straightforward, but this is a way for you to see where things are and what they do. There's logic in this to where if you're in a vehicle, then it will put the vehicle's uh, health bar on yours, and then the, your health bar will go in the pet uh, UI. It's it's you know, pretty normal sort of UI stuff. So the next thing is Chinchilla Minimap, which looks like where's all the other buttons. You just hover over it, and then the buttons will show up. Um, I don't have, obviously, a class order hall, so that button shows up right down here. This is the tracking button, all that jazz. You can move all of this stuff just by right-clicking it and playing with the configuration options in there. So the other thing that a lot of people might be wondering, where did it go, is how do I get to my bags? Well, use a hotkey, but if you don't want to do that, it's right down here in the corner. That's your backpack. Then you've got your game menu, which is right down here, just hidden amongst this stuff, all the same buttons. And if you have a pet bar, it'll show up just to the right of the game menu down below right here. So a couple of other things that will show up. Let me bring this up so that you can see where they live. Is if we go to bar groups, somewhere in here there is a thing that lets you show where they go. Okay, so buffs will show up right down there and they will fill out to the right. I can just tell you where they are. So this is where your buffs will go. They'll start here and they'll they'll fill out to the right all the way across. And you'll notice that when the party frame was active, there's a space under there for the buffs to go. And debuffs start under your health frame and move to the left. And then um, target buffs and debuffs uh, show up underneath the target frame and they move uh, toward the center and down. And then you've got um, your, uh, so there's a, there's two different uh, active tracking things that show up above your health bar and the target's health bar. Dots or debuffs that you apply to the target that have a duration less than, uh, than two minutes will show up right above here. So it's long enough that you can track anything you really need to for combat. And then any buffs you put on yourself with the, with shorter than two minute duration will go above your player frame. And both of those go from the center and work their way out. And that's so that you don't have to worry about anything else for tracking your debuffs or your buffs on yourself. It pretty much works for everything. Even when I dabble around in another class, just messing around with it to test things, it works quite well. Uh, the next thing is your action bars. And this is one of those things that's maybe not quite as intuitive. So I'm going to take some stuff and fill some of these out just so that you can see where things are and how they work. All right. So what we've got here, you can see that we have uh, three rows of five. And so we've got actually two different action bars going on right here. This one on the top here is bar one in bartender. And this one on the bottom is bar five. So bar one is 10 keys long, bar five is five keys long. The reason they're that is because there's modifiers that page them to another set of buttons. So if we hold shift, bar one becomes bar two. So we'll just put a two up here and bar five becomes bar six. That's if you're holding shift. If you hold control, then bar two 
or bar one becomes bar three, and bar five becomes bar seven. And so you've got shift and then control, and similarly with alt, bar one becomes bar four, and bar five becomes bar eight. So with this, you've got four different sets of action bars right from the get-go. So it's 60 different buttons without going anything higher than 1 through 15. That's how I like to do it. Do it however you want. If you want to change the paging on Bartender, because you don't like that for some reason, all you've got to do is go to Bar 1, go to State Configuration, and you can change where the bar is page to or whether they page at all. Same thing with bar five. So another thing that I'll point out is there are a couple of hidden bars here. The extra action bar by default goes right there. And there's also a little bar right down here. This is just a couple of extra bars that I put in so that I can hotkey stuff on my mouse with macros right over there. Um, that's all there is uh, to know there. These are where the bars that page from this bar live even though there's really no reason to have them there because you can page to them. Set it up however you want. That's just the way that I use it. So that's the basic overview of how the UI works and where everything is and what it does. The only things that are different are there are some add-ons that I use that uh, are not included in this. And the reason that they're not included is because they really don't require a configuration file and it would just be a lot of extra overhead to put them in here. So instead, I'm going to switch over to live and show you what all of the other add-ons that I use are and what they're called and what they do so that you can go and grab those yourself off of Curse if you want to use them or just leave them out if you don't. So uh, let's hop over to live real quick. All right, hopping into live... A couple more things. You can see the buffs that I was talking about right down there. You can also see the quest tracker shows up here. That's a function of Chinchilla. If you don't like that, you can move it. But I like it over here because then all the quest icons that you have are show up on the right-hand side, so they're easier to get to, in my opinion. Uh, that's just how that works. Um, but let's go over all of the other add-ons that I have installed so you can see what they are and what they do. So NPC scan overlay, just it, it shows uh, patrol things on your map so that you can see where spawns tend to show up. This goes along with NPC scan, but they are not required for one another, so it's a separate thing. I use a different add-on to actually display when a rare is found, so uh, I just like this so I can see what their paths are. Ask Mr. Robot is something that you can use for raid profiling and, um, and logs and seeing how much everybody screwed up on the fights. Um, I'm not using it right now because it's really not necessary unless you're doing some pretty progressive rating. Auctionator is, uh, it just does more stuff for the auction house. It's really great. I think that Blizzard should just kind of implement that, that add-on into the base game with a couple of other changes. Bag Boy, or, or Bad Boy, it just uh, lets you block and report spam. You'll see, well, you don't normally see because I have my chat covered, but it's uh, it it's really effective. I like it, and it allows you to easily report people for doing annoying things. Bag Brother lets you show uh, lets you look at the stuff into the inventories of your other characters, which is really handy if you have a bank alt or play on a lot of characters. I do it because of bank alt. Um, bag non and then bag non all of this stuff just is what I use for my bags. And here's the thing where it lets you look at other characters. I just like this because it's all just one big thing. Very easy to use. So the next one is, uh, we already did Bartender, Battle Pet Daily Tamer. That just shows you which, um, which tamers you fought each day and makes them easier to find. Blizz Move is really cool. It lets you drag any of the default windows. And then when you close them, they open right back up where they're supposed to go. It's such a little thing, but it's really, really handy. Um, so all of the broker things we'll talk about in a little bit when we talk about Titan panel. So just sit tight on broker stuff. Can I mog it? Shows information on the, uh, on the icon for different gear that you have, whether you have it unlocked. So you'll see that this has a little checkbox right there, and it's also got one up in the tooltip that shows, yes, I have learned this appearance, or it can't be learned, or it's a different armor type. Whatever it is, it's just a really handy thing that keeps a database of all of the transmog things that you've unlocked. 
uh, chat loot icons. These show up in chat if I if I link something in chat right there, it will it will show the uh, icon for whatever it is in chat. This one is is sort of iffy sometimes, but uh, when it does work, it's pretty cool. It seems like it's still kind of worked on. Uh, Chinchilla minimap, we already know what that is. Close up is a pretty cool one. So if I'm looking at, oh, that's from Mogget. Let me go to, where is that? Um, let me open up appearances. There we go. So close up lets me move stuff. I can scroll with the mouse wheel or scoot this around or whatever. It just gives me a lot more control over how stuff looks in that menu. Um, color Picker Plus just gives you a more detailed color picker. So if I load up weak auras and I want to mess with something and I want to see um, a color picker, of course I can't think of where one is right this minute. But uh, anyway, it's the it's where the color chooser is, and it gives you a, a better color chooser. That's really all it is. Um, it's a lot more like the one from Photoshop and less like the one from MS Paint. Cross Realm Assist, I've made a video about this. It's just a really handy thing for joining other groups. Not as useful as it used to be because Blizzard has made it so that you don't actually phase to a different realm until certain conditions are met, so you can't just cycle through them as easily, but there's still some cases where it's possible, so I keep it around. Uh, Deja Character Stats shows you all of the extra stats for your character. It's configurable. It's pretty great. I don't show everything, but I do have a few extra things I want to see, like movement speed, so I use that. Details is the uh, combat log thing that I use. There's, I mean, you can use Recount or Scada or Details. All of them are very good. Just pick the one that you like the best. I just happen to like this one. Uh, and there's a bunch of stuff for details, extra, 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 extra stuff. Pretty great. Dynamic cam is going to be very important on Tuesday because the action camera is returning. And that is what I use to profile the action cam. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think they're planning something to where that it automatically enables the action cam for you upon login because Blizzard has changed it so that it automatically does not enable when you log in. It, it turns itself off. That was their answer for that. Enhanced menu is pretty cool. It just gives you a bunch of extra context for clicking on people's names. So if I click on this dude, whoever this is, I, can, um, I get like guild invite and a bunch of other stuff in there. Uh, an armory link and everything. It's just really handy. Add some extra context for that. Flash taskbar is useful if you use two monitors or if you tend to alt tab a lot. It will flash. It will flash the button on the taskbar if you get a Q pop or when someone whispers you or something like that. Gather mate is just a really good tracker for gathering. Nothing really fancy there. Uh, handy notes is really the greatest thing ever during holidays because I can zoom out here and go to Eastern Kingdoms. Look where all the candy buckets are. Pretty cool. And I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and point out there is a, another add-on called TomTom, Tom, which does waypoints. And you can actually uh, shift right-click on these or control right-click. And yeah, thank you. Um, you can control right-click and bring, uh, if you're in the same continent, it will actually make a waypoint to any of these while you're hovering over it. It'll tell you that on the tooltip. So that's a really handy thing, and there's stuff for everything. There's where all the treasures are, or for the well-read achievement, for the lore walker stuff, just everything shows up on that. It's really good. Um, Hose and Chat is an add-on that I'm working on. I haven't released it yet, but what it does is it's just a fun profanity filter that changes swear words to the Hose and equivalent, uh, because I think it's hilarious. Instant Portals is another just real lifesaver, because it shows you where the actual portal is for all the dungeons. It's the greatest thing ever. See, here's Emerald Nightmare right under there. So if you want to know, oh gosh, where is the portal to... Here's the one that everybody can't remember. Frostfire Ridge. Oh, the portal to Blood Mall Slag Mines is right up there. So you can just fly to it. You can set a waypoint to it. It's really easy. So that's Instance Portals. Uh, Kill the Bar is what I use to get rid of the uh, bar up on the top of the screen that uh, there's a bunch of add-ons that do that. This is one that I compiled from somebody else's source code just because there wasn't a publicly released one yet. But go look on Curse and you'll find tons of things that get rid of that. Highly recommended because that bar is the worst. 
Leatrix Plus. Um, this one is kind of different. It is like a lot of little add-ons combined into one. There's some stuff that will do automatically like sell junk or repair so you don't need scrap or anything else like that. It, it just does a bunch of stuff. You know, load it up and play around with it. It's pretty handy for adding a bunch of options that were taken out of the options menu back. It's, it's just a really great handy thing. Uh, LibShared Media 3.0, uh, that was included in the add-on pack that just allows you to get stuff like these talent frames for the background on all this stuff. Mapster is the map add-on that I use, and I like it because you can use the full big map, and it can be a little larger than the default one. You can configure a bunch of stuff with it. It really just makes it a little bit better, but all it needs is a little bit. Here's Mask, and there's a bunch of other things, but I just use the Shadow one. Mask Skinner for Pitbull is useful if you want to see... If you don't want to use Raven and you want to use Pitbull to make your uh, auras, then uh, you'll want to use this if you want the Mask thing put on it. I have it in here just because, because of Legacy, but I don't really use it anymore. Master Plan and Master Plan A, these things are... Um, good if you ever go back to the Draenor Garrison and you want it to be super easy to send stuff off. There you go. No big deal. Um, I keep it around because once in a while I go back there to see if there's a gold mission or something, and there almost never is. Model Peak. These are kind of weird, but what it allows you to do is uh, it's not very evident right away, but if somebody links a mount, so if I link this dude... Then you can click on it and see its model. Same thing for pets and and so pets and mounts, whatever. It just lets you see what it actually looks like instead of just a link of it. You just uh, control click it. So that's model peak. Mogget is Mogget. It's this whole big deal for uh, doing transmog and stuff. It's kind of depreciated just because of the built-in uh, wardrobe system now, but I still keep it around because sometimes it's a little better. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about that. Move Anything is pretty great. Um, let's load this up. It, oh, where is it? Oh, okay, it's in, it's, it's here. So it just lets you reposition anything you want, anything in the game. You can reposition it, make it a permanent change, whatever you want to do. It, it deserves its own entire video. There's so much that it can do, but that's what I do. Move Talking Head lets you like drag the talking head around if you want to. I think that Move Anything has that function now, so I'm, I just haven't removed it because I'm not really sure if I need it anymore. Here's NPC Scan, which I'm not using because I'm using something else. I'll get to that when I get to it in the alphabet. Um, I don't use Omen anymore. I have it there in case for some reason I need it, but um, there's another thing that I use that helps me track threat, so I don't really need Omen, but just in case I have it there. Omni CC, I just like the way the cooldown flash looks with it a little better than the default one, but the default one can show numbers now, so it's kind of up to you. Um, Opi, I'll go over it really quickly, but I think I may actually make a video just about this and how I use it, but it's what allows me to do these little circle menus. And I'll get more into that in the future because that's just such an amazing add-on. Overachiever is pretty cool. It shows you if you've uh, let's see if I've got one that fits the criteria. It'll show you if, like, if you hover over food that's part of an achievement, it'll tell you if you've eaten it yet for that achievement or not. There's, it, it just kind of gives you more context to things about your achievements. It also does some stuff like it had a search panel before there was a search panel. Um, it, it, it's just uh, it makes achievements a little bit better to use and easier to navigate through. So it's. Uh, it's not the most useful thing uh, ever anymore because they have improved that some, but it's still useful enough that I keep it around. Pet Battle Master and Pet Tracker are the pet add-ons that I use. Uh, I'm not doing Pet Battle stuff yet. I save that for later in an expansion to, to do that once I run out of stuff, and Legion is nowhere close to running out of stuff. Pitbull we've talked about. Postal is just a really awesome mailbox add-on that lets you open all your mail or uh, do stuff in batches. It, it, I honestly don't remember everything that it does anymore just because I've been using it for so long and I don't know what the default mail frame is like. Uh, Pratt is my chat add-on. It just does a lot of chat stuff and it's almost worth its own video as well. Quartz is the cast bar that I actually didn't show you, um, but it shows up right here. 
and it's got uh, this is a latency indicator to show you like if you want to chain cast this I'll want to hit it right when it's there so that I can get a better idea of chain casting so actually I can hit the button a little early and that will dynamically change to show me latency. It also has your uh, target's cast bar. I made them the same length so that you can see when your cast is gonna go off versus your opponent's just so that you can time it a little better, but that's where the cast bar is. Sorry for not pointing that out a little earlier. So that's what Quartz does. Rarity, um, it, it gives you sort of a, it keeps a, a history of all of your attempts on rare drops and pets and mounts and stuff like that. Um, you can look at it. There's a few different ways to see it, but that's uh, that's what that does. So when people are like, okay, I got this after 213 attempts, and they're posting it out on Reddit, that's how they know is they're using this add-on. Raven is the buff bars. We talked about that. Shared media just lets, uh, just lets your fonts and your background pictures and your bar textures and all that be accessed by a lot of different add-ons. Silver Dragon is the one that I use instead of NPC Scan because I just like it a little better, and it... It will bring up things that people in your guild or your group or whatever see, and it'll pipe them over to you so that you can see it too. Uh, Skinner, we've seen, does all of this stuff, uh, makes everything look pretty. That's what Skinner does. Slash in is a is an add-on function that lets you delay part of a uh, part of a macro by a certain amount of seconds. So if you want to say something like if you want to make a macro where you're casting resurrection, um, let's just go ahead and go to macros here. Uh, there's a there's a video forthcoming about macros because I do a lot of stuff with them. Um, if you want to make a, a a temp resurrection video or video. Um, macro so how you would use that is you do something like this so we'll just use rejuvenation as or let's use healing touch as a as an example so there's cast healing touch and then we want to use uh, in five seconds hello so let's um, if we were to if we were to execute that what it would do is we would start casting healing touch and then five seconds after that the macro would have us say hello so that's what it does it's it's handy for those snarky little macros you make where it's like come back to life you failed and try again when you're rezzing someone uh, Stat Squisher is an experimental add-on that attempts to change the value of the numbers displayed on the screen, uh, reducing it by a factor of 100 or 1,000 or something. It's not quite ready for usage. It's something that someone else is building that I've been eagerly testing out because I like smaller numbers on the screen. Storyline is the quest frame that I use. This is a really well-known add-on, but it just makes the quest frame a lot more immersive. And so uh, if you've if you've ever seen me doing questing lately, that's the big uh, kind of parchment-looking quest frame. I, I enjoy it. There's some other options out there, but this one's pretty simple. Telemancy. That one is really only relevant right now, but that shows where all the teleporters in Suramar are. So it tells you which one there are, uh, which ones to go to, and even the ones that you haven't found uh, and whether they're active or not. So that one's pretty handy. The Undermine Journal is what tells me the going rate for everything. So this actually is something that is updated uh, when you update the add-on, and it updates about every three days, and it tells you what the going rate game-wide is for different stuff. And so you know about how much it's worth if it's not on your auction house. Tidy plates are the name plates that I use, and... I'm going to see if I can get somewhere quickly that I can show you what they do. But they also include a threat meter and other stuff like that so that you can see what your threat is versus other people. I'm nowhere near anywhere that I can see that. But that's the that's the name plates that I use with the bar and the name below it. Uh, I, I really like them. The default name plates are a lot better now, but tidy plates is still... Uh, by far the best ones out there in my opinion uh tip tack we've talked about that's what makes all the the tool tips look nice tip tack item ref just shows you uh, uh item references for things that actually have one 
uh, pretty handy stuff. And then um, Tip Tech MSP is if you do role playing, then uh, this has the Mary Sue protocol. If you if you do a lot of role play, then you'll know what that is, and it just allows that information to show up on the tip uh, on the tool tip, which is handy. So you can go and grab that. That's not included in the in the default uh, UI pack, just because it's one more thing that not everybody will use. Um, tip Tech Talents shows uh, players' talents, so it'll load it. That guy's resto spec, and it works for pretty much everyone. So uh, Titan Panel, that is this thing up here. And this, the, so those broker plugins add stuff to Titan Panel. So here's my, uh, you know, here's my network latency and how much, uh, how much my UI is using, and all of that stuff. Over here is my XP because this is the only XP bar I have because I never need to look at it. I spend almost all my time at max level. Um, you know, here's my location, all that stuff. Uh, rarities up there. There's all the gold I have on my whole account, so you guys can see how much gold I have. Pretty great, huh? Pretty cool. Uh, a bunch of other stuff. Um, I put my LFG up here just because I find that's more reliable than having the button on the minimap. But that's what Titan Panel is, and there's, those are a lot of plugins for that. TomTom Tom was that waypoint thing that I told you about. So if I open up my minimap, I can just boom, right shift or control right click, make a waypoint right there, and it'll point me to it. Real simple. Not a lot of action of that, and then we can clear all the waypoints away. Next is Total RP3, which is uh, these buttons up here that have some RP stuff. This is another thing that I do kind of like pet battles when there's more downtime in the game. And honestly, if Blizzard keeps up with the pace that they're going, I don't know if I'll ever RP again just because there's so much stuff to do. Transmog Roulette. Oh man, <laughs> this thing is a riot. So go over to appearances, and if or actually I need to get at the transmogger, don't I? So here's my grand expedition yak. I cannot recommend this enough. So here's transmog roulette. It gives you these little dice icons, and you can just like cycle through all the gloves, and it'll pick one randomly, or you can cycle through everything, and it will randomize it. And sometimes you get the most horrifying creations imaginable. Other times, it's something that oh isn't so bad maybe needs a little work but it makes you think outside the box because you'll see stuff that you never would have thought putting together and sometimes some of these with just a little bit of tweaking can be kind of nice other times it's straight up nightmare fuel so that's what transmog roulette is hours and hours of cheap entertainment because look at this guy oh man I don't care how crazy or weird that looks. If I saw that coming toward me at a battleground, I would be scared. All right, so Transmog Roulette. Then we have Weak Auras. You know what that is. Bunch of Weak Aura stuff. World Crest Tracker. This thing is incredible. It shows you all the world quests. It's configurable. It's just the greatest. So here's all the world quests. Here's the details about them. Pretty awesome. The next one is World Quest Tab. If World Quest Tracker isn't enough, and it pretty much is anymore, but another way to do it is World Quest Tab, and you can sort these and see all the stuff, and it will highlight the place that they are. This is just one more really awesome view that has a little more immediately visible details about how some of these are. So you can sort them by time, by faction, by type. So it was like, oh, here's where's all my Nightfall in one? Wow. There's quite a few of them right now. So that's World Quest Tab. Very, very handy. So getting down to the nitty gritty, Nib Chat Tabs. That's just what's showing these uh, transparent chat tabs so that everything can be really, really invisible. That's one of the secrets. But since my chat is almost always hidden, it's one of those things that's I decided not to include by default because I don't know if you want to use Pratt or not. Uh, Deadly Boss Mods is Deadly Boss Mods. I keep everything for Deadly Boss Mods up to date and installed. Uh, it's just wonderful. Deadly Boss Mods is maybe the only mod that the only add-on that I think everyone absolutely has to have. I know you can get by without it. Don't get me wrong. I know you can, but it's so much better with it. That there you go. And so finally, Cecile Quick Launch, the very last one. That just gives you a little command line. And that lets you type in the name of almost anything, an achievement, a mount, a pet. So if I want to get one of my raptors, I just start typing raptor, and then here they all are. And then I can arrow down to it and hit enter, and there's that raptor. 
Pretty cool. And you can even make a key that just calls the last one that you used. Or if I want to use, um, let's see, I got a moose pet, didn't I? Let's see, what's it called? It's called uh, maybe Grove something. But anyway, if you know what it is, of course, I don't know what it is. Uh, anyway, if you know what it is, you can get to it pretty way. Uh, Elderhorn, that's what it was. So, so baby Elderhorn. There he is. So that's what Cecile Quick Launch does. If you use a command line for anything else, it's a really handy thing. I just kind of wish that it worked in the regular chat uh, frame, which would be even cooler. So those are all the other add-ons that I use. That's basically the long and short of the UI. I really hope that you enjoy it. This is version 1.0. Um, I'll be releasing more as it changes, but just go ahead and keep the add-ons up to date. Don't worry about not updating them or getting them for me. That's why it's an add-on pack that you can download is so you can maintain them yourself. I'm always using the alpha versions of the add-ons, so you don't have to worry about uh, you know staying behind a version or something like that. If you're using anything later than alpha, I'm going to be on top of it. If there's a big change, that's when I will update the release and let people know, at least on Twitter, maybe make a video about it if it's necessary. I've been a ghost human this entire time. And I guess somehow I still am. Oh, oh, there we go. Wow, that lasts forever. That's kind of cool. Anyway, so that is the UI. And uh, thank you all for supporting the channel. Thanks for uh, being patient while I got it out. And I hope it is as awesome for you as it is for me. And I would love to see screenshots of how you've changed it or what other stuff you've decided to do with it. Okay, thanks. Bye.